Uh, hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Die Conduct. I'm your narrator by the same name. We are back with more Higurashi When They Cry. This is Chapter 1 in Onikokoshi. Uh, this video will be cover covering Chapters 5, 6, and 7. I know I said I'd do this, like, uh, a, a while ago. It's, it's been a while. Uh, but I'll get it done, and then I'll read Chapter 2, What's Nagashi. When I do that one, I'll just read it all ahead of time and then just release it in one big chunk. Just like a bunch of videos all at once. We'll ping the crap out of you. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get into Chapter 5, shall we? <laughs> How was it, Kei-chan? So you went to Reina-san's house. Wasn't it amazing? <laughs> it's nothing like that, right? Right? I don't know, Reina. I feel like you probably have people tied up in your basement. Unlike my house, the Ryugu residence wasn't newly constructed. It had been renovated from a pre-existing building. Well, the house itself was fine. The problem was the yard. There... It was crammed with rows upon rows of oddities. They were all the same as Colonel Sanders, stuff you'd see while walking around in town. The Cape Shots mascot, Little Licky, the to Todolamon in front of the pharmacy. Is that like a Pokemon or something? She even had the Amazing Flying Elephant from the top of the department store. I, I don't know what the Amazing Flying Elephant is, but I kind of want one. It sounds cool. I'll agree with you that those are cute, but why the mailbox? Won't you get in trouble for that one? But, oh, so cute. How is a mailbox cute? She must have thought about it because her face filled with delight. Yes, I dream of mailbox. So it's the bigger the better, just as long as it's big. Yes, and her room displays the smaller ones. I had a chance to see them before. And cute kids like Rika-chan are locked away in the basement? Yes, they are. A lot of them. <laughs> yep, yep, I'll keep anything. How <laughs> cute. Yes. People, objects, animals. Reina will consume all. So she takes anything she likes back to her nest. No ill will intended. Hey, Reina, you know about the Statue of Liberty in New York, right? Is that cute? Yeah, cute. Oh, I want it. Yes, the Statue of Friggin' Liberty. The U.S. should probably come up with some countermeasures ASAP. If not, the Statue of Liberty really will take a trip to Hinamisawa in the not-so-distant future. Yes, she's going to steal a whole ass statue. My apologies for keeping you waiting. Rika-chan had returned. No fun being called to the staff room. Did you do something? How rude. Rika isn't a hoodlum like Keiichi-san. <laughs> Nothing like that, Keiji-kun. Riga-chan is a member of the festival committee. Festival? The school cultural festival or something? Keiji-chan, Keiji-chan, I already told you. It's the village festival, the Watanagashi. Oh, come to think of it, she didn't say there'd be a festival at the shrine during the next break. I wonder what this uh, strange festival could be. There definitely won't be any suspicious activities that happen during it, right? Definitely no people going missing or anything. Right. So what's this Watanagashi thing about? Is it like a floating lantern festival? I guess the last part where you set things adrift in the river is similar. Except we use cotton things like old worn out futons and padded cloaks. It's a festival expressing thanks for their years of service. Yes, we uh, we litter. That's how you uh, celebrate. The people living in Hinamizawa dump their futons and padded cloaks in a stream? It sounds like it'd be a lot of trouble if it backed up the current. Maybe they should just drop some fish in and have a fish wrangling competition. Skewer them and sprinkle a little salt. Oh man, I can smell it already. Yes, grilled fish. Very tasty. Let's just summer camp. I never anticipated how destitute Keiichi-san's imaginative capabilities would actually be. Yes, Sadako is uh, judging us pretty harshly. What? How could you tell I was thinking something silly? It was written all over your face. Wow. What sort of face could have expressed what I'd imagined just now? Reina demonstrated for me. I see. No argument here. 
<laughs> There's nothing fun like that, you see. But you still look forward to it. Let's all go together. I'll come get you that day. I don't really feel like going to festivals unless someone asks me to. I wouldn't get bored if these guys were going. You won't get bored. We're doing it again this year. Mion's proclamation came as soon as she looked at each member in turn. What was this all about? From the way Mion looked, it was probably our club, club's... Blah, 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 blah. English. Yes, I can English, so I swear. Our club's summer tradition. The Watanagashi 4 Demon Firefight. Yes, they're going to get fire and they're just going to punch it. They're going to punch the fire. But that sounds awful. What kind of name is that? I think it's a cute name, though. I tried to object sharply, but since Reyna looked happy about it, I decided it was pointless to fight it. Uh, you fight with Reyna, that's always a losing. It's a losing proposition there. Since Keiji is here this year, it becomes five demons. Rikachan made a small correction in light of my presence. So, how does this funky sounding club activity tie into the festival? Ho oh, ho ho. This is where you exhibit the skills you've nurtured through your daily club activities. Exactly. We show the full extent of the abilities that the best of the best have obtained through our daily trials and tribulations. It's like fighting a, a boss in an MMO after you've grinded for six months. But last year the mayor got angry, so we need to make sure not to cause any problems this time. I, I could really see them causing problems. <laughs> so basically we're doing club activities while checking out the stalls. Mikachan really is the only one who explains things that made the thing... <laughs> Rikachan really is the only one who explains things so that they make sense. I see. So we'll be exhibiting on those busy festival grounds. Raina was right. Of course that would be a reason for the mayor to get angry. <laughs> but it's lots of fun. That was the only point I did not doubt. It would be, without question, fun. The day of the festival was drawing near soon. Well, putting that aside for now, let's start our club activities today. Any objections? Nay. Like a horse, nay. Our voices rang out in unison. When there's lots of people, card games really are the easiest to play. This really is the most basic of table games. Playing with the marked deck again? We'll use a new one today. There are no marks in the cards, so we're on equal footing. Are you sure about that? I don't think we are. I wonder if that really is the case. I'll have to inspect them. Well, that was fair. Just to be safe, everyone check the cards. Yes, these seem to be fine. Are you all satisfied? Then today, I guess, we'll play President. That's good for five people. President? What the hell kind of game is President? Is it kind of like Reverse Old Maid, where you want to end up with the, the maid? Another standard card game. First one to get rid of all their cards wins. The basic rules, play a better card than the one before. You can play straights and pairs, there are various techniques that improve the game like reversals. But because it's such a well-known game, there are lots of house rules for it as well. The name, for example. In my hometown, we call it Millionaire. I'd like to go over some details. Are the jokers wild? Can you make a reversal with three threes? No jokers, two is the highest. You can reverse a reversal. You can only make a reversal with four of a kind, not three. Also, you know how the peasant sends a good card at the president? None of that. While I was confirming the familiar rules, Sadako looked over at me cautiously. I probably should have tried to look like more of an amateur. I was pretty used to this game. It's president and it's with a new deck. Today I might be able to win. Keiichi, you are sorely mistaken. I had the gist of the rules now, but that wasn't everything, was it? So what shall today's penalty be? How about that? Why don't we all write something down on slips of paper and have the loser draw one? Ah, that seemed like it could be interesting. Yes, group punishments. Ho 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 ho. I'll write a nasty one and have KG sand draw it. That's just mean, Sadako. It would be awful if you wrote a bad one and drew it yourself. Just don't lose. That's it. That's right. When you're going to lose a game, uh, just don't. Don't you know best? <laughs> Mion handed out several slips of paper to everybody. Then write down whatever and put it in this bag. 
When you lose, stick your hand inside and pick one out. Now then, what would be a good penalty? Worst case scenario, you draw what you wrote. Something too intense would be like digging your own grave. That's true, very true. No penalty? Let's forbid that kind of idea from being written down. Rika Chan's casual suggestion caused Mion's hand to lurch to a sudden halt. Ah, that's so sneaky, Mion san. She wrote no penalty, and the corner of the slip is folded. <laughs> she was cheating. She was going to cheat. I see. And just in case you lost, you grab the note with the folded corner and you'd be safe. That was a good idea. Diabolical as ever, Mion. Rika Chan is quite formidable, too, being able to see through that. Oof. I couldn't underestimate her, even though she doesn't stand out. Everyone, don't write penalties that are too mean, okay? Nobody agreed to Reyna's proposal. <laughs> Everyone was ruthless. It's fine, Reyna, just don't lose. Y yeah, that's true. Okay, I'll try hard so everyone has to pick the penalty I write. Reyna was quite brutal, even though she usually appeared meek. Better not underestimate her, either. I agree with that. I'm very curious what Reyna's penalty is in particular. Mm. Probably make you dress up in something cute. Everybody's penalties are scary. I still didn't know what Rika Chan's penalties would be like. I sure didn't want to find out, though. Basically, you can't afford to lose this game. Everybody here ready? We all nodded determinedly. Having confirmed that, Leon dealt out the cards. Finally, the battle begins. Cue the epic music. I had a decent starting hand. Card after card was played in the middle. Not needing me on to tell them, both Rika Chan and Sadako played their cards without hesitation. Reyna and I were the only ones who paused to think. It seemed that Reyna genuinely couldn't make up her mind, but I was different. I was like a shark stalking its prey, just waiting for the right time to strike. Huh? Will this work? Then I'll play this three and I'm out. Nine. Nobody. Eight. Seven. I'm out. Five and five. I'm out. Then I'll discard this last one and I'm out. Ah, I missed my chance. The loser of the first round was, the vault people, Mion. And now I was certain. Today I could win. I feel like that's foreshadowing. <laughs> now, now then. Mion, pull out one of the slips, okay? Mion, accepting her defeat, scrounged around inside the bag and pulled out one piece of paper. What? Who did this? Who wrote this? Mion quivered and shrieked. Uh, what is it? What is it? Oh, oh no. Reyna was also surprised when she peeked at it. What kind of terrible thing was written on it? Pet the principal on the head. Hey, wait, how is this bad? Keiji-san, do you not understand? The principal is balding and ashamed of it. Sadako yelled with a serious look on her face. But she wasn't as loud as me on shriek. What could it be? The principal is a martial arts master. Oh. He boasts about traveling around the world, perfecting his skills when he was younger. Mm -hmm. So he's, ah, uh, pretty tough. You pet his head, it's, it's game over. Game over, man, game over. He switched to teaching after seeing the poor state of education in Japan after the war. He was inhuman. Pet that guy's head? Yes. As the club president, there is no way I can set a bad example by refusing. Huh. She fell out a yell as she dashed off down the hallway. Wouldn't it have been easier to sneak out quietly and try to do it without making a fuss? Probably impossible. They say he used to hunt sea slugs just by sensing their presence. I can do nothing but wait with bated breath. Mion's gonna die. Oh, that didn't sound very good. A rumble shook the classroom. That's the principal's aerial opener. Oh, and there's more. And more. Ooh. Following the launcher with a jab, jab, strong, fierce combo. She's even using meter. Fighting game reference. <laughs> From how it sounded, the principal's jumping fierce sounds like a multi-hit combo. 
Uh, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Nothing I could do now except stay calm. I understood now why there was no delinquents at this school. Because if there were, they'd get the crap eaten out of them. After a few moments of silence, Neon slumped back to us. Fetid, is that good enough? Neon said before collapsing. <laughs> She's alive, at least. Now we can continue the game. M monster. I was amazed the person who made club activities like these could say that. But now, the worst penalty is gone now, right? Right? I wouldn't be so sure about that, Reyna. Reyna tried to lighten the mood and was only met with Mion's malicious grin. She was serious now. I'm not holding back anymore. You'll all get yours. The pace of the game became bizarrely quick. I could tell the game had gotten more intense. Ace! Three, four, five, I'm out. I'm out as well. <laughs> I'm out too. Three, I am out now. Uh, I lost? Reyna. Reyna got lost. And the heavens chose to vanquish Reyna. Oof. Uh, what kind of penalty, I wonder? What kind of penalty, I wonder? It wasn't exactly hard for her to be worried. Just thinking of the level of difficulty of Mion's first penalty still made me quiver. And so the penalty she drew with trembling fingers was... The heck was this? Speak like a maid. Huh, what is this? This one, what do I need to do? So basically, it means that you have to use the same expressions as a maid? Uh, oh, okay, master. It hit me like a ton of bricks. I had no idea who wrote that penalty, but she was awesome. Then, Reyna, can you shuffle the cards and deal? Y yes master Ah, I could die right now. Keiichi, you bastard. A anyway, let's continue. Right, Reyna? Yes, master. The eagerness to which I was goading Reyna into addressing me as master was downright impressive if I do say so myself. Hiya! I won't lose anymore. I'm out. I shan't lose you either. I'm out. And with that, I'm out too. I can't believe it. Is it Reyna's loss again? Reyna again? What kind of penalty would it be this time? I was delighted by the mysterious sense of anticipation. Anticipation? No, this was conviction. Remove one piece of clothing from the top and bottom halves of your body. That's just indecent. Who could have written this? My face reddened in anger. If I didn't yell something out, I wouldn't be able to hide my shaking about how excited he was. Ah, who did write that? God, please give that man a noble prize. That would be an ignoble prize. Not good, not good. What, what I was thinking about was written on my face. How, uh, Mi-chan. Reyna begged Mion with teary eyes, but everyone knew Mion's answer already. Nope, nope, won't go easy on you. You lost, so take it like a man. Understood, Master. Uh, I'll undress. What? I looked around, thinking someone else would probably stop her. Of course, I wasn't exactly trying to stop her, either. Then I heard the rustling of clothing. The sound of her skirt hitting the ground sent my heart racing. Is this fine, M Master? I looked away like a gentleman. But these club activities, you need to be ruthless, after all. Ah, oh. <laughs> She's wearing her gym clothing underneath. She prepared. Keiichi-san, whatever were you expecting? Certainly we would not have her strip if she weren't wearing her PE clothes underneath. Sadako poked fun at me, but right now I can't hear it. Not bad, Keiichi-san. This old man never even thought you would go after her like that. Y you've got it all wrong. I didn't write that one. Master didn't write this one? Her squirming around in her PE clothes made it impossible for me not to feel anything. <laughs> Calm down, Keiichi Maibara. Mion probably wrote that one and planned to go after me as I panicked. You can't fall for a trap after knowing it's a trap. Clear your head. Calm down and assess the situation. I was determined to think my way out of this. And the answer was quite simple. I, I win! And then I became a god. Yeah. <laughs> 
I, who had already entered the domain of godhood, what would dare stand in my way? It's like they're pulled to me magnetically. I was picking up aces and twos like nobody's business. Huh? How could my luck of the draw be so bad? Sadako lost, right? I'll draw the penalty. Speak like a little sister, yes. Ah, Fine. Oni-chan. Yes. The pleasure of making this brat disgrace herself. <laughs> Why is he so mean to Sadako? Ah! This old man loses again. Neon's lost, right? I'll draw it out. Wear a girl's school swimsuit. No! That's the one I wanted Gaichan to get. <laughs> Just imagine. Keiichi in a girl's swimsuit. Yes. Mion's despair was like sweet honey. Master, I, I lost again. Reina lost. I'll draw it for you. Let the person in first place rest their head on your lap. Huh? Oh. It, this, this outfit, Master? Yeah. She's not wearing a skirt, so it's her bare legs. He sounds very happy about that. And then Sadako loses again. Ah, Onichan, you're too good. <laughs> Sadako lost again. I'll draw it. Obey the person in first place. How about I have you give me a shoulder massage? <laughs> Fine, Onichan. Come on, do it a bit harder. Don't use your nails. <laughs> Keiichi's getting overzealous. I think he's gonna lose. I had transformed into an evil dictator and couldn't be doing any better. I felt like I could control how the cards played out with my mind, and even decide what suits would appear just by willing it. By the time I realized it, I had already assembled a harem. I was laughing haughtily as I rested my head on Reyna, who was now a bloomer-clad maid. Sadako was wearing a collar and had taken on little sister properties. Mion was fanning me while wearing a school swimsuit. <laughs> the only one safe for now is Rika. How oh, today is, is Master's overwhelming victory, isn't it? Ah! Please refrain from moving your head around so much. I began to think. Why does man have no end to his desires? How could I wish for more than this palace of dreams? What is it, Keiji? I'm saddened by the thought of a man having no end to his desires. That was it. Riko-chan hadn't been in first, but she continued to escape being in last. Keiji is quite greedy. It said you should know when enough is enough. I know that very well. But how to say it? I feel like I wouldn't mind if I died now. <laughs> ah, Master, please refrain from moving your head around. You say you wouldn't mind dying. Then that can be arranged. Rika? Rika-chan said it in her usual calm manner with a cheery tone. This was undoubtedly a declaration of war. Go, Rika-chan, go! Take him out! Defeat this archdevil of perversion. I might not be able to win, but I'll beat him. Such stoicism from this little girl who's always hidden away in Sadako's shadow. It would probably be rude of me not to meet her head on. I shall face you myself, little one. I saw Mion swap a few cards with Rika-chan in the middle of the game, but pretended I didn't see it. Do you believe you can de defeat Keiichi-sama with just that? Fool. Two, ace, 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 eight, 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 reversal. Everybody looked over at me. I was still brimming with confidence. <laughs> the four of them have all allied against me. That's it. You're making me laugh. That was good. Reversal, reversal. What? How could such a thing be? Sadako let out a shriek. <laughs> you simpletons. Using up all of her cards before calling the reversal left Rika Chan with no good cards. She was defeated soon after. I I lost. Ha 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 ha! Finally you fall into my clutches. Now I'll pick one out. What? Wear cat ears, a bell collar, and a tail. Ha 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 ha! Even the penalties were as I wished. We have uh Neko Rika now. Rika-chan hung her head and equipped the three holy artifacts. <laughs> it's questionable as to why such things were in Mion's locker, but since I had no objections, I didn't ask. Mion just has this stuff just... available. Whoa! This was so... 
Ow. Oh no. I felt like I had become Reyna. This was definitely cute. Oh no. It's cute, isn't it? Isn't it? Ow. I want to take her home. That wasn't me talking. That was the actual Reyna. Mew. As Rika-chan mimicked the cat, teary-eyed rings of smoke escaped from Reyna's ears with an audible poof. Rika-chan must take home. Taking her home. Just... just for a while. I won't do anything strange. Nothing strange. Rika, that sounds, uh... Or, Reyna, sorry. That sounds uh, a little... Uh, little sus there. A little... A little sus. I see. I still have one trick left. Mion gasped and dropped her fist into her open palm. If Reyna must, she can take me home. After Reyna-san beat Keiji-san, she can. They thought that Reyna in cute mode would be able to defeat me. Would it be that easy? Opposing me was the same as opposing God. I'd teach them their place. How preposterous. That Reyna can't defeat me. Huh? For a moment, I didn't know what was going on. The 52 cards danced and flowed freely between Reyna's hands like the machinations of a master magician. Magic. And KG was dead. In the middle of those flowing cards was Reyna's ecstatic expression, her head bobbing around. Sh -sh -sh shall we, Keiji-kun? Hurry, hurry! My whole body knew it already. I was going to lose. <laughs> no play? Nothing to play, Keiji-chan? And with this, I'm out. Everyone cheered. I was spent. Ah, I've got no regrets. God, thank you for letting me dream just a little. Now then, I'll take one out. Keiji san's penalty! This is it! Everybody peeked at it in unison, gazes flicking between the text and my face. All day today, I did as I pleased, I'll do whatever it is. What's on there? The most diabolical of punishments. All. Huh? Every penalty up until now. What? What the heck? Keiji-san, you should not be speaking <laughs> like a little brother. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Sonei-chan. Ah. Uh. Oh, this is quite addicting. Next, I'll have you rub my shoulders. Keiji-kun, I don't need a lap pillow, so do that other one, okay? Ah, uh, yes, master. <laughs> oh, of course. Keiji-kun, that's... That's so cute. Say it again, say it again. Sure. No, please spare me, master. Reyna passed out with a squeal, blood spewing from her nose like a fountain. My dignity was being trampled more than a communal doormat. Oof. Next is from this old man. I'm gonna have you fan me for a good long while, you know? Foosh, foosh. Oh, I almost forgot. You need to wear this, don't you? The school swimsuit. Huh? This is for girls? Can't I wear one for boys? It was clearly written here, wear a girl's school swimsuit, as you can see. Sadako is like a lone shark. Actually, me trying to escape reality as fast as humanly possible was pretty adorable if I did say so myself. But, but, but uh, whose school swimsuit am I going to wear? If I were wearing one of yours, you wouldn't like it, right? Ah, this old man doesn't care about that kind of stuff after all. Think of it as a little benefit. I'm not that in shape, so I think even K-Chan can fit into, into it. The executioners surrounded me, wagging their fingers. No, no! Poor K-Chi-san. My first thought, it's tied around the waist. Second thought, the chest area was pretty loose. Third thought, the crotch area was... How? They're gone. It's crushed. <laughs> Keiji-kun is bending forward. Cute, cute. Be ready after you wear the cat ears, bell, and tail. Keichan, you want to look in the mirror? It's amazing, really. It's probably best if you look. The certain scientific calculating nature mixed in with her fascination made me on very scary. Uh, I would like to respectfully decline, Master. Your ensemble is complete. If only we could send you home dressed like that. <laughs> Then, is this enough? I'll change and... 
While I was saying that, Neon placed her hands on my shoulders, and Rika-chan slipped up behind me without a sound. Not yet, Keiichi. There's still the first penalty left. In this getup, Rika-chan patted my head without saying a word. He's gonna die. Sir, excuse me. Yes, please come in. I stepped forwards into the principal's office. My bell collar jingled adorably. The principal froze solid with a smile on his face as he saw me. I couldn't blame him. In this sacred place of study, specifically in his office. Though I said excuse me as I entered, the sight of a person entering with a school swimsuit, cat ears, a collar, and a tail, and for it to be a young male student. Without a doubt, any normal person's psyche would have stopped cold. But this could be explained. We'll call it uncanny valley camouflage, if you will. When humans see others, they only begin to, to act after confirming this is human. Meaning that, if he could not comprehend what was in front of him, then in those moments before he could begin to fully process the situation, his mind was completely blank. That was my one and only chance for victory. My penalty? Rubbing the principal's head. Principal, I challenge... I heard what sounded like a zhing three times. His three-gauge super? And then it all went dark. <laughs> the principal said one thing to me. What does it mean to be a man? And in a heartbeat, Keiichi san was out cold. <laughs> that tremor resounded throughout the Hinamizawan twilight. Ouch. What a way to go. Reina was given permission to caress Rika-chan's head as much as she wanted, so they headed home together very pleased. Once again today, it was just Mion and I going home. Man, that was intense. I didn't know Kei-chan was so good at president. No, I was more surprised than anyone. If I was playing with guys, I wouldn't have been that strong. But still, it was pretty bad. Being carried off in a stretcher in that outfit will probably haunt me until the day I die. <laughs> but that's fine, isn't it? You were able to do something to boast about for the ages, too. Huh. Well, when she said it like that, we both smiled at each other. Oh, we meet again, Keiji-kun. It was Tomitake-san. I felt like I'd been running into him quite often. It is Birdman. Hey, take any good pictures? Well, a few. So, Tomitake-san suddenly leaned over and whispered into my ear. You sure get around. Today you already have a different girl? It's not like that. No need to hide it. It's important to get lots of experience when you're young. Because Tommy Takasan let out such a crude laugh, Mion knew what we were talking about without even hearing his whispering. <laughs> I've heard through the grapevine that Mr. Tommy Take is quite the catch himself, hmm? Uh, no, that wasn't my intention. Sure, sure. Keep up the good work and take plenty of pictures. See ya! Mion seemed to really want to get rid of this lout quickly. From the way she spoke, it seemed as if Mion knew Tommy Takasan quite well. How's the, How's the year treating you, mister? Staying until the Watanagashi? Yep, I plan to. After f photographing the festival, I plan on heading back to Tokyo. Being a photographer sure is easy. Be sure to win some big award and become famous. You spent all your best years on photography, after all. Yeah, I don't think I'm that far gone. Don't they say men start developing their own unique flavor in their 30s? What does it matter what you taste like? That's so gross. Hmm. <laughs> uh, look at the time. I need to get back to the inn before it gets dark. Tomoe Takesan began to take his leave with a dry laugh. It did look like he was outmatched by Peon. Now then, I'll see you both at the festival. Uh, he just disappears. After waving a hand cheerfully, Tomoe Takesan disappeared amidst the cries of the Higurashi. The way he's going, he probably won't ever get famous. I had him promise he'd display a picture of me if he ever opened up a gallery, but I don't think that'll ever happen. 
So you know Tomitake-san? Yeah, he's an acquaintance of sorts, but you know how easy it is to tell who's an outsider. It sounded like you meet him all the time. Tomitake-san comes around to Hinamisawa regularly. Maybe two or three times a year? He says he's taking pictures of the seasonal scenery and wild birds, but, well, those photos really are nothing to phone home about. The Im image Mion painted of Tomitake-san was fairly unique. The Tomitake-san I knew was more mysterious. The words flowed naturally from my mouth. I wonder if he's really here to take pictures of birds. Mion stared blankly at me as if to ask, Why do you say that? It just seems he's here for something other than taking pictures, I think. Don't you get that feeling? Like about that incident, the dismemberment. <laughs> oh, you too? If so, you've got good instincts, Kei-chan. She agreed with what I thought, but was quite chipper at how she said it. You knew about it then, Mion? Of course. He might be able to pull, pull one over on everyone else, but he can't fool this old man. Mion was posturing pretentiously, but I had easily come to a very different conclusion from what she was imagining. It felt like all apprehensions I had about Tomitake-san disappeared, lifting a burden off my shoulders. I was finally able to appreciate how clear the evening sky over Hinamizawa was. He's there for the, the women. That's what Tomitake-san is there for. Ah! I exhaled everything in my lungs and inhaled just as much. Yes, which is the... Ah! <laughs> it smelled like dusk. What is it, Kei-chan? It's just that I never thought the cries of the Higurashi could feel this good. Haha. <laughs> What's gotten into you all of a sudden, Kei-chan? We both continued to giggle, not knowing why. I wonder what Reina is doing. I bet she's getting her fill of Rika-chan by now. She's probably in the middle of asking her over so she can treat her to dinner. It'd be great if she's able to take her home. I wonder. Rika-chan is pretty good at that stuff. Yeah, I feel the same. That head petting penalty was probably from Rika-chan. I thought so too. The only one who could get away with patting his head is Rika-chan after all. Just pointless chit-chat. The hot day felt like it was being cooled down by the cries of the Higurashi. Pointless and idle chatter. That's usually what you remember from uh, your friendships in school and all that. Just the really pointless stuff. Ah, that's the end of chapter five. We'll go ahead and read the, the tip and then we will get into chapter six. Community notice. We're greeting the end of the rainy season sooner than in prior years. On this day, when it feels like summer will soon arrive, I'm pleased that everyone is in good health. The season for the Watanagashi is finally upon us. I believe the assistance of the town council will make this a wonderful festival. I also wish to ask for the assistance of everyone in regards to a few things. Number one, collecting bazaar goods. We look forward to a well-received hinami Salon Grand Bazaar uh, Exhibition. Holding a massive collection of excess goods and used clothing. No raw goods, please. Management, Makino, and a telephone number. Recruiting Little Festival Drum Dancers. The renowned Little Festival Drum Dancers group known for its careful choreography, the Shofu Society, is make, taking last-minute participants. We're looking for any showboat elementary and middle schoolers. Management is Kimiyoshi. Taking donations. We are accepting donations in multiples of 1,000 yen. About 10 bucks. For every 1,000 yen donation, you'll be awarded with a refreshment stand ticket. Management is uh, Sonozaki, so it's uh, Mion's family, I think, that's doing that. We're always taking suggestions for ways to improve the festival at all times. If you have an interesting idea, call Kimiyoshi at uh, phone number. Uh, Kimiyoshi is the mayor, by the way. There's a 200 yen refreshment stand ticket attached below the cut line. Nice. Free drinks. All right, and uh, that is the end of chapter five. So we'll go ahead and get into chapter six now. A few days had passed since the incident. <laughs> what incident? 
During that time, either Mion was busy or Rika-chan had to help with the festival preparations, so we couldn't get everybody together for club activities. Even though I thought I would never want to participate again after the years it shaved off my life each time, not having it only made my heart grow fonder. I really am not honest with myself. Today we finally had our club activities again. These weren't the same old club activities. It was called the Watanagashi Five Demon Fire Fight. And it was one of the biggest events at the club. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Keiichi, does this yukata still fit you? Can you try it on for a second? Mom pulled out an old, dusty yukata. Nah, I don't need a yukata. Those are embarrassing, so I'll just go in my normal clothes. But this is a festival. Wear it, okay? Ray and the others said regular clothes are just fine. If I was the only one wearing a yukata, it'd be even more embarrassing. I put on the same old vest as usual. I'll be going with Reyna and the others, so you don't need to worry about me. Is that so? I'll be going with Dad when he wakes up. Dad let out a loud snore from the sofa. I know the feeling. <laughs> from how it looks, he must have pulled an all-nighter last night. He just finished sending in his manuscript, so he might not wake up for a while. It seems my dad writes for art magazines sometimes, too. I've never read it, though. I wonder if my dad is a really famous artist. Since his own son is saying something like that, I can't imagine he's selling all that well. Wow. Just rip cage, he's dad. But he's able to feed a family of three, and my life isn't exactly full of hardships. It could be that he's some master painter, and I just didn't know about it. Ding dong! Keiji kun are you home? Uh-oh, it was already time. I didn't want them coming here, so I was planning on leaving early and waiting outside. Oh my, it's Reina chan <laughs> Thank you for always looking after Keiichi. Uh, Ma'am, ma he's also b been looking out for... Why are you blushing just from meeting my mom? Don't get all flustered. It really doesn't feel right. Let's go, Reina. Since Reina would continue to space out if I left her here, I grabbed her hand and dragged her out. Reina chan look after Keiichi for me. Uh, y yes, ma'am. Even if it means I must sacrifice myself. And why don't you do it right now? I'll push you in front of a bus. <laughs> she waved back even as I was dragging her away. Okay, Kei Chan, you hungry today? We'll take care of that at all these stalls. You thought I'd let myself get full knowing the club activities will involve the stalls? Wouldn't have it any other way. Where are Rika Chan and Sadako? Are they already at the temple? Yep, Rika Chan's a festival committee member after all. Sadako Chan is probably with her as well. I see. All right, let's make some noise today. Yeah! We were already in high spirits with just the three of us there. It was way more lively at the Furede Shrine than the last time I came, far exceeding my expectations. Throngs of people were crammed between rows of market stalls lined with colorful paper lanterns. Despite that, it was actually quite enjoyable. There sure are lots of people here. I can't believe they all live in Hinamizawa. Everybody attends the Watanagashi. I think about half the village is here. It's not just that. Municipal and youth councils from neighboring towns and villages advertise this event as well. That's right. There aren't that many students at our school. But there's a lot of kids here today. It just doesn't feel like a festival unless there are kids running around after all. Who else is supposed to steal your wallet and run off with it? That's true, I agree. Uh, hello and good evening. These two knew everybody we came across. Of course, I greeted them as well, but I still wasn't familiar with everybody yet. Oh, Reina chan Thanks for the food you brought me a while back. My son loved it. He said it was delicious. Uh, it was nothing at all. I'm glad he liked it. Say hello to Kazuma-kun for me, please. Kazuma? Like, Konosuba Kazuma? 
<laughs> hey, if it isn't the Sonozaki Yojo-chan. I've been in charge of a stand again this year, so make sure you come visit. Pops, have you gotten fatter? You'll end up having a heart attack with a gut like that. Ah, oh, this kid here is new. Are you one of our underclassmen? He's one of my members, an upcoming hopeful. If you come across him, he could crush your stand in one night. You got a little Missy seal of approval, I see. I hope you take it easy on me. As you can imagine, Mion was chatting away with the old guys running the stalls. Nichan is really energetic, after all. She's really popular with the older men. Hmm. Hmm, that's a little... It's a little sus. A little, a little sus there. I think Radon is pretty popular, too, being cute and all. That was, of course, so long as her little uh, condition didn't flare up. But as long as she's blushing quietly, she's pretty cute. Huh? I'm popular with some people? Really? Really? With some people. I evaded giving her an answer by roughly tussling her hair. The stall keepers came all the way from town. It's not really a festival without them, after all. So, we're gonna mess with them now? I don't care what kind of match it is, I'm gonna win it. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> I'll try to. Hey! You're all very late. It's unacceptable to keep a lady waiting, Keiichi son. Ah, oh, my bad. So, where is this lady I've kept waiting? I don't see her. Ah, oh, what did you just say? Alright, Sadako was in top form as well. It seems she was all excited about being able to get everybody in the club together for the first time in a while. Whoa! Rika-chan? Cute? Reina let out a late sigh. It seemed that the real lady had made her appearance. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to Keiichi as well. Whoa! Looking good. Looking sharp again this year. Cute. <laughs> Reina's just having a meltdown. I'm gonna take you home. Rika-chan was wearing a Shrine Maiden outfit. Yep. Reina's little outburst was completely understandable. <laughs> Rika-chan's clothes sure do look like the real deal. Is that a real Shrine Maiden outfit? Yeah, she's the only Shrine Maiden. My grandmother made them by hand. They're quite authentic. Rika-chan has an important task to do at the end of the festival, so she's wearing this. I see. Rika-chan was on the executive committee because she performed all the Shrine Maiden rituals for the festival. My work is only during the finale of the festival, so I can still play for a while. But we cannot afford to waste any time. Let us begin. Alright! <laughs> I've always liked that line. Alright! It felt good to wander around the festival with just the five of us. Mion called everyone over to a stand that caught her attention and proposed a rather odd competition. Takoyaki eating race! Everybody has to buy their own. Ready? Go! A standard in vendor's stalls, the Takoyaki stand. What was especially standard for these kinds of events was the fact that they were simply balls of dough, Takoyaki in name only. It burns! Are you okay, Keiichi-kun? Have some water. My, my, English calling Takayaki Hall was suicide. I guess the trick is to buy the ready-made ones that have been left there for a while. They really don't taste good. But you can't eat them fast. The stall next to it was a shaved ice stand. It was still a bit too early in the season for that, but right then it didn't matter. Let's do shaved ice this time. It's a shaved ice eating race. Ready? Go! Shaved ice eating race? I, I can't. Brain freeze. As long as you can melt it a bit with your body heat, then it's so cold. <laughs> Not smart. This old man ordered it with plenty of syrup. It'll melt quickly when it's mixed up. Those stooges were too late. The moment they chose to tackle it head on was their downfall. Phew. Finished. K-Chan is done? 
That was too fast. It, it couldn't be. Cage-kun, you didn't. Add water from the goldfish tank behind you, did you? That can't taste very good. <laughs> Just poured a bunch of water in that, then drank it really fast. Ah, imagine how cold that'd be. Actually, that was another old favorite. A cotton candy stand. Why don't we do this one next? Of course, it's a speed eating contest. Hey, hey, how do you eat cotton candy quickly? How? You, uh, you just ball it up, stuff it in your mouth. On Sadako's mark, me on Sadako and I all compressed the cotton candy with our bare hands. The time it took to stick the whole thing in our mouths? Three seconds. Speed, speed racer there. I expected Sadako to figure it out, but I didn't think Kei-chan would too. Can't have you treated me like I'm a newbie forever, can I? It won't taste very good. Rikishan had also crushed it between her hands and stuck it into her mouth. <laughs> this is probably the only place in Japan where people eat cotton candy like this. We're supposed to enjoy it, you know? I think only Reina's cotton candy was happy with how it was eaten. But if I love up doing stuff like eat noodles through the nose contest or human water pump at the goldfish scoop at the rate things are going. <laughs> this old male will probably still win, too. I'm simply no match for Mian-san when it comes to eating repulsive things. Yeah, seriously. What's up with you guys? Are you telling me you don't want to have a Blue Hawaii Top Yakisoba eating contest? Why would you do that? That's just disgusting. Shake, shake. Both Sadako and I shook our heads in unison. Um... Can we have a game that doesn't involve food this time? Can we? Reina's proposal was a godsend. It was about time we played a different kind of game. It also seemed like neither Reina nor Rika-chan were any good at speed eating or gorging themselves. Okay, Reina, I'll let you pick out the next game. Anything is fine. Well then, well then. I'm gonna be the judge. Find cute things in the festival grounds. You have one minute. Fine by me. I know exactly what Reina likes. All right. I think I can win with that. Ready? Go! No? Why aren't Keiichi Kun and Rika chan starting? Why not? Mion and Sadako dashed off madly, but Rika chan and I calmly stayed right where we were. Could it be? You've already found it? The cute thing? We've already found it. Keiichi too? Yeah. What is it? What is it? I can't wait. Both Rika-chan and I stood motionless for those few moments before Mion and Sadako returned. This is probably the first time we've gone head-to-head -head like this. It will be the first. Rika-chan, you expect to win with that, huh? I am a member of this club as well. To win by any means is our society's third rule. Rika-chan sneered to the best of her ability. You're on. Both Mion and Sadako came back, each with their own plan of attack stuffed in their arms. Okay then, okay then, let's go in order. Let's start with the club president, Michan. Too bad, you guys, I'm betting this now. This old man brought this! Where did she get those? They were old tin, diamond-shaped signs. Pleb curry, snake oil incense, and... What the hell? Oronaman C? How about this? The hell is Oranaman C? That's very understated. A little too understated, Mion. I used to see those stuck up on barbed wire fences. They are more nostalgic than cute. Can you explain what part of that is cute? But there were puffs of smoke noisily shooting out from Reina's ears and nose. Almost like a steam train! Wow. I... Yeah, I didn't get it. I don't get it either, Keiichi. <laughs> I shall be up next. It's this! It was a hand-drawn poster from the Lady Society Roasted Corn Stall. It was a really bad sketch done by a housewife. An anthropomorphic roasted corn drawn without any sort of real plan. Its very existence invited a sense of sorrow to the viewer. <laughs> Must be pretty hard to look at, huh? Blech. That was the sound of blood jetting out of Raina's nose. It seemed to have been rated higher than Mion's. What a... 
What a strange thing. I really didn't get it. It feels like your artistic sense is a little avant-garde by about, uh, five eons. <laughs> oh, those were nothing but mass-produced signs, after all. They had no chance against something hand-drawn. I couldn't even begin to follow the way those guys were thinking. Then I will be next. Rika-chan's up. Next is Rika-chan, is it? What can you even do without anything? Did you and Sadako both forget? If Rika-chan felt like it, she could simply... After moving about 10 yards, she began waddling up to Reina. Seeing that, both Mian and Sadako gasped. Uh, oh no! Too late! They lost. Rika-chan tripped over nothing and lay motionless after falling down. Reina hurried over to her. Rika-chan, are you alright? Alright? Rika-chan had a lump on her forehead and tears welled up in her eyes. Only her fingers peeked out from the, her sleeves. This was the vital part. The palms of her hands were covered by her sleeves. So you made just a single sound. Mew. <laughs> ah, cute, cute. Going to take you home. I completely forgotten that. A play that I personally had to use. Rina's face went completely red, her head bobbing back and forth with excitement. She embraced Rika-chan and began rubbing her cheek against her. Fast enough to start a small fire. I'd expect no less from her. Not a single element was overlooked. Lolly, Shrine Maiden, Brink of Crying, Mew, it was perfect. A simple trip transcended into pure moe. Now this is what you call art. Keichan is a pretty weird definition of art. I'll just pretend the sharp sting of those words cutting through me like a razor was a figment of my imagination. Rikachan turned her gaze to me with a daunting smile as she was caressed by Reina, who was in full cute mode. Now, Keiichi, can you beat me? That cold smile is frightening, Rikachan. It must just be my imagination, but I see a demon inside her sometimes. Hmm. Keichan seems to have his own plan of attack. I wonder what he's going to show her. I also wish to observe the play Keiji-san will make. Could it be? Is Keiji also going to give a performance? I basked in their pointed stares. I pulled Reina, who gave no signs of cancelling out cute mode, away from Rika-chan. How? Cute thing, cute thing. Keiji-kun, let go. I'll show you something even cuter, so just hold on for now. Huh? Oh? Something even cuter? But it's a bit too crowded here. Let's go back there. Reina looked very surprised as I pulled her behind the shrine. I cannot fathom what Keiji sound could possibly be planning. This is Keiji on after all. No, it couldn't be. Keep on fighting. Yeah. After a bit, I returned. Silence. And a bit after that, so did Reina, dragging her feet. There's no way that scoundrel Keichan did something to innocent little Reina. Mion and Sadako passed by me, going straight to Reina. What exactly did he do to you? For a moment, Reina was too dazed to realize someone was talking to her. <sighs> oh, it's me, Chan. Oh. Reina, are you all right? Did Keichan do anything to you? No, he didn't do anything strange to me. Huh. This is quite severe. Exactly what did Keiichi-san show you? Uh, it was so cute. Oh. oh no. Cute? What did he show you, Reina? Reina read it a really long... Oh. Her eyes sparkled as she spoke. Cute. So cute. It was Keiichi-san's furry little seal. <laughs> and then he immediately gets his ass kicked. Not the furry little seal. In the blink of an eye, Mion and Sadako's elbows smash into my face. Huh? What? What? Showing Reina something so dirty. <laughs> you sick pervert. I shall have you beaten into oblivion. Wait, 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 you got it all wrong. A dark billowing aura flowed from Mion to Sadako. It was no good. They're gonna kill me. What a way to go. Michan, I'm not sure what's going on, but you've got it all wrong. You see, Keiji-kun had... 
It's a fur seal keychain. Rika-chan stuck her hand in my pocket and pulled out the keychain. Yeah? He said he made it long ago for one of his summer school assignments. He said he doesn't show it often because it's embarrassing. Yeah, so small and cute. He tried his best to make it. It's so wonderful. <laughs> uh, oh, this old man thought you meant it was Keiichi. Keiichi's cute little fur seal. Oh, <laughs> I'd expect no less from Mian-san. You misconstrued things in the wildest ways. So did you, Sadako. So did you. They slung insults at each other and looked like they were ready to tear into each other at any second. I beg of you. If I'm in the clear, would you mind getting off of me? <laughs> we were interrupted by the flash of a camera. It's Toitake. Hey guys, you all seem energetic, as usual. It was Tomitake-san. As I lay crumpled on the ground, Rion and Sadako continued to bicker above me. Riga-chan was patting me on the head, and Reina was still in cute mode. It was probably quite a lively scene. It's a fine evening indeed, although it's rather poor etiquette to photograph a lady without her permission. That's right. At least you don't really need Sadako's permission. Ugh! Sadako dug her heel into me. Good evening. Ah, you're heading back tomorrow, aren't you? Were you able to take lots of good photos? Thanks to you. I got plenty of good shots. Tonight's the last we can see of old Tomitake-sama, isn't it? It's such a shame. Hurry up and have your major breakout soon. Just as rude as ever, aren't you? I really am sad I won't be able to hear that voice of yours for almost half a year. Be sure to have as much fun as you can tonight. We'll be back in Tokyo tomorrow, after all. That's true. It will be another six months until I can enjoy another night where I can see the stars. Tomitake san looked up at the night sky cheerfully. After that moment, even though he was smiling, I sensed a bit of sadness. Why don't you move here, Tomitake san? In Hinamizawa. Tomitake san was speechless. It's not very convenient here. No shops or recreational spots. There might not be anything really here, but you know, everyone knew what I was trying to say. Tomitake san was also well aware. So Reina, Mion, Sadako, and Rika chan, none of them butted in. I've only been here for less than a month, so I don't really know everything about it. Normally, I'm a really talkative guy, but in situations like this, I'm at a loss for words. Even though all this was happening in such a boisterous setting, it felt like all the background noise was fading into the distance. This place is probably... Tomei Takisan rested his hand on me gently, silencing me. Thank you, Keiichi-kun. Mion-chan and Reina-chan, Sadako-chan and Rika-chan. Tomei Takisan's smile was so slight, it looked as if it was going to crumble at any minute, but it was warm. I also think it would be great if I could live here. Though my, those might have been cruel wor words coming from a kid who didn't need to worry about working to feed himself. A hand touched my back. It was Reina. Keiji kun, you shouldn't pick on adults. It's not nice. The background clamor of the festival returned. We won't be seeing him for a while after all. We need to make sure Tomitake san also enjoys tonight. When Reina smiled, the mood instantly got brighter. That's true. I think I'll do just that. Ah, hey, Michan. How about it? Can we let Tomitake san in our club activities? Well, that's a great idea. Or so I thought, but Mian had a snobbish look on her face. Ah, one of the requirements for membership is residence in Hinamizawa, you see. Come on, Michan, just for today. Don't be mean. Well, he doesn't come around often every year. I'll make him an honorary citizen. Wow, yay. <laughs> now then, I wonder if this aged fellow well past his prime will be a match for me. Let's have him show us the wisdom of a mature adult. <laughs> Can you keep up with us, young'uns? Tomi Takisan stepped back slightly at our audacious grins. 
I, Mion Sotozaki, club president, do hereby authorize honorary citizen Tomitake's entry into our club. Her words were quickly drowned out by our cheers. What do you mean by club? What our club does, you see, in order to cope with our complicated society, we perform various activities with various roles. Sometimes they are in your favor, and sometimes they work against you. I'm pretty weak, so I prefer you not single me out. Let's try to get along. If you wish to mock our childish games, then this will be the perfect opportunity. We'll leave you with nothing. We won't even leave the hairs on your butt. What a way to go. So it's a club where we play games together. Of course, Rika-chan was the only one to give an answer that made sense. All right, just what I wanted. I'll take you up on that challenge. Don't be too rough on me, my mentors. Tomitaki-san got riled up and did a victory pose like he was 10 years younger. That's perfect. The ideal uh, specimen to crush. We continued walking through the festival with Mion in the front. Now we look like a family of six. It had some intensity to it. Same rules as always. The loser will, of course, be subject to a penalty. Tomitaki-san was surprised, but to us, it was just the same as always. Regardless of how terrible a penalty it was, just don't lose. Reina was also brimming with determination. She didn't have any intention of losing. That's true. I tousled Reina's hair to lighten the moon. She giggled to hide her embarrassment. I see. This is what it means to feel like a kid again. Tomitaki-san whispered that to nobody in particular. At that moment, we heard an old man call out in a strong voice. Looking over, I realized it was the man Mion had greeted right before the festival. You're here, little Miss Sonozaki. It seems you brought quite the crowd. We came to eradicate your entire stall. His stall was a shooting gallery. Cool. It was the usual setup where you had to knock down the prize you wanted with a cork gun. The rules are simple. Three shots. The winner is whoever gets the biggest prize. Everybody shouted their agreement. There was no need to consider how to win, since the condition for victory was simply size. The biggest prize at the stall, it went without question. It was that one, wasn't it? Whoa, th that teddy bear. It's cute. Reyna was gazing long longingly at a large stuffed animal. It was intentionally placed on an unsteady platform, so it's possible to get it if you hit the right spot. Are you sure about that? It's magnificently set up to make someone think that it's easy to get. It's actually set up in a way that you'll never get it. Not bad, Keiji-san. I figured you would see through this scam instantly. Hmm, the most logical course of action would be to aim for some candy or a doll. The intent analysis had already begun. In this club, you'll get eaten alive if you don't come prepared. Everything hinges on what you plan. You, you can. What, blah, blah, blah. Everything hinges on what plan you can come up with before the main event. At some point, a large crowd had gathered around us, making a big fuss. There was this much of a following for our club's infamous event. <laughs> Locking that bear down ensures a win. Only three shots. To use them all just trying? That'd be rough. Hey, I have other customers waiting, you know. Who's up first? The first one has the advantage of being able to aim for the easier prizes, but it's dangerous to complete without knowing the gun's quirks. Or dangerous, dangerous to compete, sorry. Tomitake-san's take on the situation was pretty good. He gets what our club is about. He knows it. He knows all about it. Well then, to be fair, how about using rock, paper, scissors to decide? How about it? That's really the only way. Rock, paper, scissors! Yes. Yep, they do the rock, paper, scissors. After a couple of matches, it ended up with Mion being first. I didn't want to end up first. Ah, well, I'll just think of it as a handicap. Gramps, gun, here you go. When the shooting range guy handed her a rifle, Mion looked it over intently. She didn't forget to check the cork bullet either. Okay. This gun is brand new, isn't it? No faults? Not bad. 
Mion raised the gun in one swift motion. It was completely different from her careful inspection. She was shooting from the hip. Fire. Reload. Fire. Reload. And fire again. Flop. Flop, flop. Three candy boxes fell, one after the other. A big haul. A lot of candy. The crowd paused in a moment of awe and then erupted in cheers. Whoa! Awesome! That was quite good. Tomoe Taki-san was at a loss for words after seeing sh such shooting prowess. Yeah, amazing, Michan. Three, three! Her accuracy was incredible. Her choice of targets wasn't bad either. The three Mion had gone after were fairly large and pretty easy to knock over. They were all targets with a very high return on investment. Ugh, got the yawns. Who's up next? Sadako? Careful, the bullets are light. Next was Sadako. The rifle looked a bit big for her lithe body, but it didn't seem like she had any problem with the weight. Of course, I shall aim for the grand prize. She proclaimed that she was going for the teddy bear. Damn, Sadako. Such a bold move. The moment she knocks it over, she's guaranteed to be in first. Good luck, Sadako-chan. Sadako was the opposite of Mion. She aimed at the target quite carefully and squeezed the trigger. Ah, these bullets are too light. The first two bullets struck the bear in the torso, but it only shifted a bit. The first two bullets struck the bear in the torso, but it only shifted a little bit. You need to aim higher towards the head or it won't work. Sadako's third bullet wasn't aimed at the bear, but at the candy box below its arm. I hate to say it, but it appears the bear is just too much for me. She went boldly after the big catch, but she switched over to the less impressive prey at the last second. The crowd only gave a strained laugh. Were they laughing because she lacked the courage? These fools know nothing. A fine attempt, Sadako. You've gotten better. The palm of Mion's outstretched hand went pop as it tapped down lightly on Sadako. She appeared to be talking hot air, but this was actually completely calculated. <laughs> Damn that, Sadako. Just to avoid being in last place, she dared to switch over to an easy target. Without shame or honor. Magnificent. I'll allow you to take the bear, reina -san. I pray for your victory. Okay, okay. Thanks so much, Sadako-chan. Oh, bear sounds so cute. Yes. Reina was up next. She couldn't hit the broadside of a barn as regular Reina, but she said that bear was cute. I wonder how Reina-chan will do. I hope she's able to hit at least one. You're underestimating Reina, Tomitake-san. <laughs> it's Reina, you know. It's Reina Ryuyu, you know. If it was to get that teddy bear... Whoa! Tell me to talk son wheeled around to see what the blah, 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 blah. Tell me to talk son wheeled around to see what all the commotion the spectators were making was about. If it was to get that bear, she'd be able to shoot through a pinhole. The one known as Reina Ryugu could do it. Sh shaking, it's shaking. How oh, cute. She wants that bear. Reina couldn't hide her excitement over the bear's slow rocking. Now, Reina couldn't lose. Not bad, Reina san. The less collected you become, the stronger you get. Whoa! Another big cheer. Reina's bullet hit the bear's forehead again. Not enough, the bear seemed to wobble more than before. But it might not be possible. You never know. With Reina chans skill, it might be. While tomitake san was just as excited as the crowd, Rika-chan's analysis was not swayed by emotion. If Reina had 10 more shots, then she could surely knock it over. But with just one more, no matter how you looked at it, it was a no-go. Ow! The crowd let out a dejected groan. She had shot it right in the forehead three times. 
It was a bit late, but they gave her a good round of applause for the attempt. Ah, Bear-san, take him home. Oh, so sad. She should be praised for her valor, but she had no trophies to show for it. Then, at that moment, the old man flicked one of the candy boxes with his finger and handed it to Reina. This is for you, little lady. Huh? You're giving this to... to me? Huh? The gods wouldn't forgive me if I let you go home empty-handed after, after such a display. There was another shower of applause. <laughs> Reina turned bright red and I pulled her back over to us by, the, by her hand. You did a good job. Your cute mode really surprised me. Oh, I really wanted Mr. Bear. Wah. It was easy to see that it only needed a little more to be knocked over. Reina had done quite a lot for me. I still needed to pay her back for that delicious picnic. Alright, then I'll... I'll get it and give it to you. What? Tomoe Takesan had stolen the words right out of my mouth. Okay, okay. Please, Tomoe Takesan. Good luck. Damn you, old man Tomoe Take. <laughs> Stealing the good parts for yourself. A small hand stretched over and fell gently on my head just before I was overcome with frustration. You keep on fighting too, Keiichi, okay? Tomoe Takesan carefully studied the bear. Setting his sights, he shouldered the rifle while holding the other two shots in his hand. Hmm? Why is he doing that? Yes, no doubt. Tomoe Takesan is aiming for... Wah! The time between shots was short. It was meaningless to, sh to shoot again once it stopped shaking, so Tomoe Takesan was relying on rapid fire to win the battle. It was, vis vis blah, 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 blah. it was visibly wobbling much more than it ever had before. But that was all. It still didn't fall over. Dang. Aw, oh, too bad. All of Reina's momentary expectation from watching it sway violently turned into a dejected sigh. Ah, uh, that really thought it would work. Oh, oh, it seems that since you're a man, you will not be receiving any candy. That was it. It meant Tomitaki-san had no spoils of war. He's the loser no matter what. So both Kei-chan and Rika-chan can just shoot down a small, easy prize and avoid being dead last. Avoid being the loser, huh? Ah, sorry about that. Is it nighttime already? Wow. It's your turn next, Keiji-kun. Best of luck. I was the fifth shooter. I took the rifle from Tomitake-san. If I took the ruthless route, as Mion had suggested, then I'd go for a small target. Except... When I picked the rifle, I definitely got a feeling from it. It was burning passion. Passed down to me by Tomitake-san. <laughs> the regret of not being mad enough to fell the bear that Reina wanted. Yes, that's right. If I didn't aim for the bear, then I wouldn't be a man. After all, that was my promise to Reina. Huh? Huh? What promise? What? To shoot down that bear. Then give it to Reina. That one. Uh, you mean, huh? The crowd went wild when they saw our conversation. Whoa! Cool, Oni-chan. You got balls, man. <laughs> That's not it, fine men of the crowd. If I didn't do this, then Reyna might mug the old man running the stall on his way home. That'd be a way to go out. Reyna's gonna mug the old man. What a way to go. No, that's not it. That's not it at all. Why can't I just express my honest feelings? Keiji Shan surely talks the talk. But how do you actually intend to bring down that bear? Reina and Tomitake Sans shot did make it tilt a bit, but I think finishing the job will be difficult. Keiji kun, if only there was some way to shoot faster, I'd be able to pile more power on on the sway from each hit. Good luck, Keiji kun. After taking two deep breaths, I shouted over to the guy. Two more rifles! Huh? The crowd murmured amongst themselves. It's gonna fire all three shots at the same time. I wonder what Keiichi san is up to. One person can't handle three rifles at once. I get it. Nice thinking, Kei chan Mion was able to figure it out magnificently. Basically, what was taking the most time was reloading the shot. That's right! 
Then, by putting three preloaded rifles next to each other, Tomitagi-san went silent, peering at me and the bear through his lens. His photographer's blood predicted a miracle will occur. And then the crowd finally picked up on what I was I was planning. They let out a great cheer. They chanted my name, Keiichi. <laughs> Rapid fire is the key. If I miss, all is for naught. After letting out a deep breath, I paused. Relax. Now! And time stops. That moment, it felt like time itself had stopped. It felt like I could see the trajectory of the bullets. Hit it, and knock it down. The first shot hit the bear on its head. The second, the third, all of them hit. The bear swayed hard, and then... It stayed on the thing. No. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then the crowd is yelling. The crowd began. The cheers began before the stuffed animal even finished falling off the shelf. The guy caught it before I hit the ground and tossed it over to me. Who actually knocked it over? You got me. Amazing. Congratulations, Keiichi kun. Keiichi-san has finally learned how to use his head. I see you in a slightly better light now. I didn't do it all by myself. Everyone hit it and those small bits together brought it down. This trophy belongs to all of us. Alright, this is from all of us working together. Me didn't hit it a single time. It. After holding up the teddy bear like it was a championship trophy, I handed it to Reina. Here. This is from me. No, from everyone. Thanks for always making your delicious lunches. Reina, thinking she was never actually going to get it, was momentarily speechless. I can't, Keiji-kun. This is everyone's after all. Oh. In that case, I was the one who knocked it down, and it's mine. It's mine, so I'm giving it to Reina. I pushed the stuffed animal towards her again. This time, she embraced and accepted it. You've watched out for me ever since I moved here, after all. I'm really grateful, you see. Thanks a lot. Oh, Keiichi-kun. Thanks so much. Nice. Reina dove at me. Neon told me a few days later that Reina kissed me, but I didn't realize it during all the excitement at the time. I remember what I was trying to say to Tomitake-san earlier. There really isn't much of anything here. But there's lots of things you can't find anywhere else. I gained a lot from coming to Hinamizawa. Especially at that moment. The crowd's cheers echoed on and on. From the altar set up in front of the shrine, the drums sounded with a booming echo. It was the finale of the festival. I'll be going off ahead then. Uh oh. I need to go and get myself a good spot too. Well then everyone, see you in a bit. Both well, Rika-chan and Tomitake-san gave their farewells and disappeared into the crowd. I wish both of you the best in your endeavors. Now, shall we be off? Yeah, might as well go see Rika-chan's charming figure. Let's go. Yeah. Huh? Where's Reina? What are you doing? k k k kun Mi-chan, save me! Getting drug away by the crowd. Since she was carrying such a ridiculously large stuffed animal, she was being carried by the flow of people. What is she doing? She must have her hands full taking care of that bear. So I'll leave Reina in your care, Keichan. I have my hands full taking care of Sadako. Who would want to be looked after by you, Mian san Ouch, please don't pull on my arm. <laughs> Dragged her away. Before losing sight of Mion, I grabbed the back of Reina's collar. Keiichi-kun, not there. Don't grab me there. Always so bossy. Where can I grab, then? Uh, um, no. Oh. I didn't feel ashamed at all. Reina was ashamed enough for both of us. I grabbed onto Reina's hand and dashed after Mion and the others. We're gonna be late. Let's hurry up. Yeah. I hadn't realized Reina's hand was so delicate. Maybe she needed a bit more exercise and nutrition? That wasn't what I meant. Not at all. Hmm, are you sure about that, Gagey? My ears burned. 
I tried to keep calm and I repeated the phrase, keep it together Keiji Maibara in my mind, but it didn't look like I'd be able to anytime soon. I really didn't want to want I, don't know. I really didn't want Reina to see my face right then, so I pushed onwards, dragging her along without looking back even once. Wow. There was already a huge group of people gathered at the altar in front of the shrine. The fire at the altar made made it as bright as midday and just as hot. There was a pile of futons warded with sanctified rope in front of this altar. Come to think of it, they did say it was a festival where they did something with the cotton and futons. Keiji-san, Reina-san, we're over here. Sadako waved her hand from the front row. Ah, sorry, sorry. Making our way through the mass of people, we reached the spot they'd saved. How was it? Were you able to have a bit of excitement with Reina? <laughs> you punk. So that's what your plan was? Instead of replying, Mion gave us a perverse grin. How was it, Reina? Was Keichan's hand bigger than you thought it would be? Uh, uh, ow. <laughs> Reina turned bright red, puffs of steam shooting out of her. She also knocked Mion out. I heard something slice through the air and turned around to see Mion on the ground with a welt on her face. Mion, when were you hit? I didn't even see it. Between the ha and the ow over how, I think. I'm not really sure. Reina, it's not good for you to punch your friends to hide your embarrassment. I didn't hit her. Whatever. Ow. <laughs> Thump. The thunderous speed of the drum echoed, silencing the crowd. You must all be quiet. It's beginning. It was a solemn ritual. Rika-chan entered dressed as a shrine maiden, followed by members of the municipal committee. The elders all looked at Rika-chan and clasped their hands in praise. The only thing allowed to disturb the profound silence was the flash from Tomitake-san's camera. What's the big thing Rika-chan is holding? A hoe that's used for this festival. Just a big hoe. It's a sacred farming tool that only the shrine maiden may touch. It was an awkward shape for a piece of farm equipment, not uncommon for something used in rituals. After reciting a Shinto prayer, Rikunchan approached the pile of futons gathered at the altar. She swung the hose skillfully, plowing it into the futons. Each and every little movement of this performance probably had to be done in a certain way. Without a doubt, this was a ritual. What's next? Airing out futons? She's purifying futons that ab absorbed illnesses from people over winter. So when Keichan said airing out futons, he wasn't completely wrong. Rikachan's face was already dripping with sweat. That hoe was probably really heavy. She staggered side to side with the momentum of each swing. Sadako looked on, silently lending her support. Worried? Rika practiced every single day with a mochi hammer. She will certainly prevail. Sadako's hands were sweaty, and whenever Rika-chan started to sway a little, she held her breath. I wasn't me on a candidate to be the Shrine Maiden. It feels wrong having Rika-chan swing around something so heavy. I do it if they ask me, you know. And well, it's not something just anyone could do. That's true. Shrine Maidens need to be pure, after all. <laughs> Mion drove her elbow into my side. With the thud of the big drum, Rika-chan gave a solemn bow and descended from the altar. That triggered a round of generous applause. After the Shinto priest had raised up the cleansed futons like a portable altar, all the spectators stood up. Following after the priests, we all marched on at a moderate pace. They descended the shrine, shrine's giant stairs in a line. What's happening now? Washing the futons in the river? <laughs> Watsunagashi means setting cotton adrift, you know. The procession continued right up to the bank of the stream. A fire was stoked high, and it was bright as day here, too. People started crowding around it, clamoring. All right, get in line. Line up, keiji -kun. I wondered what was up. Maybe we'd get some holy wine. Red and white steam buns. <laughs> and uh, red and white bean buns. Not steamed buns. I'm thinking about food. I'm hungry. <laughs> it's not food. I said it was cotton. 
Ah, but of course. They didn't call it the Watanagashi for nothing. I finally understood. The municipal committee members pulled out the cotton from inside the futons and balled it up like mochi, handing it out to people. Reina dove into the line and brought out some for me as well. We then proceeded to the bank of the stream. Since it's your first time, Keiji-kun, just copy what I do. She held the cotton in her right hand and waved her hand as if to purify it. She touched it to her forehead, chest, navel, and both thighs. You do this three times and silently give thanks to Oyashiro-sama. Oyashiro-sama? What's that? The name of the shrine's god? Yes, it's the guardian deity of Hinamizawa. It brings about both miracles and curses, so you must be sure to so show respect. That sounded like a pretty frightening god. But, well, when in Rome. I was officially a resident of Hinamizawa now, after all. Doing as Reina showed me, I touched the cotton over myself three times. Thank you, Oyashiro sama Thank you, Oyashiro sama Oyashiro sama This way, all the evil that possesses you is sucked out by the cotton. Gives you the suck. And then, and then you let it gently drift away on the stream, and you're done. Together, Reina and I set our pieces of cotton afloat on the surface of the water. The flowers of cotton blooming in the water had sucked out all the evil festering in Hinamisawa and drifted off, disappearing into the distance. It was wonderful. Like those floating lantern festivals I'd seen on TV. The best part, though, was feeling like this rite of passage had made me a true resident of Hinamisawa. What a nice festival. Until they stab you. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Higurashi When They Cried. Uh, Onikakushi. Sorry I had to cut this video in half. For some reason, my computer just would not render a three-hour video. It just absolutely flat-out refused to. So I ended up having to cut chapter six in half. Well, not really half. It's more like two-thirds, but you know, whatever. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. The second part will be up about like five or ten minutes after this one goes live, so don't worry. It'll be there for you to watch immediately after you're done with this one. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks. Have a good one, and I'll see you later.